Sam Ali Kaba and welcome to another episode here for the Funkit Pod and to Media Prof React 2. And you can already see it from my face that I'm not too excited today because, well, yeah, I, I kind of have to react to um, the Titan submarine, right? So Media Prof reacts to the Titan submarine. Um, and I'm not reacting, reacting to the disaster that happened, okay? So I'm not bashing the people. I'm not bashing, bashing, bashing the CEO. I'm not bashing whoever would deserve bashing. I'm not making fun of anyone. Uh, well, actually, that's a lie. I'm going to bash because I'm, I'm bashing the news media. Because I think, and it's unfortunately no surprise, and it's, it's nothing new, but I think the way the news media covered this disaster was slash still is a disaster. I just watched a video by Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith is a, is a columnist, is a whatever content creator, is a pundit analyst for ESPN. I already have an issue with Stephen A. Smith and his peers because they act like they are, they are professionals, specialists for everything. There's basketball. Stephen A. Smith is there. He knows a lot about basketball. No, I'm all, all okay with that. He talks about football. He talks about the UFC, mixed martial arts. He talks like he's like we have to. We should believe that he's like the super professional, well-known guru on everything. First problem, and now he just made a video. <laughs> about the Titan submarine, talking about what happened and blah, blah. And yes, I realized that I'm creating a video now on, the t on this topic too, but hey, I'm bashing people like Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> so, and, and Stephen A. Smith is, is not my main issue. It's just an example. My main issue, of course, lies with CNN, NBC, Fox, you name it. Okay, all, all the media outlets. And none is better than the other. They're all the same they're all terrible they all do the same thing and we see that all the time and it happens with disasters and quite frankly media outlets and i hate to say it they were happy that this happened because yeah we just had those 24 hours in russia where we're like oh what's happening uh mutiny uh, what's what's going on but besides that let's be honest not many people still care about the war in terms of media consumption. Yes, we want the war to be over and so yes. But I mean, in terms of media consumption, it's not getting the clicks anymore, the views anymore that you want. So you are happy that there is something else happening that people all can get behind. Now, the outcome isn't what we wanted, but you still get all the clicks and the views. And I mean, look at what those media companies, what length they're going to, to keep the news cycle going. Now it's like, oh, the son who died, he wanted to break the Guinness World Record on the Rubik's Cube. That's why he took a Rubik's Cube. I wonder if he still got to break the record. What, what kind of news story is that? And I literally read this story this morning. Huh. So you see to which length they go just to keep the cycle going. And there are lots of different theories, reasons why they do that. Like one would be like the agenda setting theory, for example. So that means the, the media right, sets the agenda of how we think about certain things. So in this case, they focus on um, Stockton Rush, the CEO of, of Ocean Gate, right? Um, they focus on like that, how it was built, that submarine, that it could never work and it wasn't tested enough and so on. And I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just saying that the media picks like different focus points, jumps on those focus points, creates content about those focus points so that we just follow along with it. We can be like, oh yeah, tell me more about how carbon fiber couldn't be tested well enough and, and things like that. Okay. Tell me more about Stockton Rush wanting to be an astronaut or a fighter pilot, I believe, but wasn't able to because, well, tell me more about it. Yeah. So Tell me more about their collaboration with NASA and whatever university it was. So 
they set the agenda for what we want to know more. Okay, so they tell us what we want to hear, what we want to listen to, what we want to read. Okay, another one would be framing theory. Framing refers to the way events, issues, and so on are organized and presented in the news, right? So for the Titan incident, they use different perspectives for their framing. For example, one being like, it's a human tragedy, right? It is, obviously, no matter what you think about the people on board, but it's a human tragedy, right? Five people lost their lives. Another one would be like focusing on the technological part. It's a technological failure. It's a construction failure that was just not, not maintained well enough. Another one could be like focusing on regulatory concerns and so on. So this multiplicity, I think that's how you say it, right? <laughs> Not a native speaker, of different frames that allows the media to attract different segments of the audience, right? So that prolongs the story's lifeline, so to speak. Okay, so the news cycle keeps going because you will add different frames, different angles to the story so it's not just like, hey, those five people died. It's a terrible tragedy. Oh my God, we need to change something. There should be regulatory things. Whatever. Finish. It's like, hey, we focus on this framing, this angle right now. Then we move on to a different angle and a different. So they prolong the news life cycle, so to speak. Right? It's been quite a while already. And we just keep talking, seeing more content, more content, more content. So that's why they do it. Another theory that I discuss in class all the time is the cultivation theory, right? So according to cultivation theory, people's perception of reality is influenced by the media. <laughs> no surprise, right? So this extended coverage by now the Titan incident going to lead to the audience um, overestimating, for example, the frequency to which such disasters can occur. So maybe now we have like a, a higher perception for risk associated with any kind of exploration for example like remember what happened to the like what happened for example um five years ago it was before COVID, right the 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 here in thailand the school boys who got stuck in a cave and then all of a sudden it's like what happens if my kids go exploring somewhere they might be stuck in a cave or something like this right so now it's like oh my god what's going to happen if someone goes diving someone does this someone does that um which is good for the news again the news outlets are going to be like, yes, we can run with way more stories. Like, hey, this person is doing like a deep sea dive. Remember what happened to the Titan? Hey, this person is trying to create like some submarine or some whatever, a, a, a new kind of plane. But what, remember what happened when they, when they used carbon fiber in the Titan? So this is also good for news outlets because they can always refer back to it. And like, hey, remember? That's exactly what they want. Yeah, I'm just I'm not going to mention all the theories that apply, but I have I noted down three more for you just to tell you why the news outlets are doing this. Right. So another one, very basic one, use and gratification theory. Right. So this theory suggests that audience members, of course, they actively seek media that satisfies their needs, including information, personal identity, integration and social interaction and well, entertainment, too, of course. And now the different angles that we discussed before of the Titan incident, right? They cater to those needs like, like human connection, tragedy. Okay, so that, that's things that unfortunately we want to see and we want to feel the danger, not for ourselves, but if you, there's another theory that we call society of the spectacle. You want to see spectacular, crazy things in the media so that you don't have to experience it by yourself. By seeing it in the media and being covered 24-7, you kind of feel like you know all about it, just like Stephen A. Smith. You're like, oh, I know so much about it. I don't need to do it by myself, so to speak. Okay, So that's also like one reason why they produce it, because, of course, we consume it. So you can already see I'm not only throwing blame at the media outlets. I'm also saying, hey, you need to be more mindful about how we consume the media. I've got two more for you that you might not have seen coming. One of is, and I like it just because of the name, the spiral of silent theory. So listen to, or try to follow if, if you will, right? So if the media consistently presents this, this certain viewpoint, for example, emphasizing the, the alleged negligence of Ocean Gate, which is like a big talking point, it could create this perceived public consensus around that spe specific viewpoint 
discouraging dissenting opinions, right? So the media focuses on, hey, OceanGate, for lack of better words, and to get some talking points effed up. Everybody else is now like, oh yeah, they did F. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk, I'm not gonna say anything else. I'm not gonna argue that. Okay. So that's that's the theory. And I think that's also like one thing that we see, of course, a lot in all types of media content, be that political and so on. But now, especially of course, with the Titan, um, we are or well, media outlets focus on one point, drive that point home, and looking for experts to agree with them, for example. Okay. Lastly, I think that also the political economy theory, actually, like the parts of those also fit in there. Like in this case, for example, um, you look at how economic structures um, and power relation, re relation, sorry, influence media content. And so yeah, news outlets might cover the Titan incident because it attracts attention, of course, which in turn increases revenue. So right now, the Titan incident is like the biggest thing happening in the world besides the war and the war is like we don't care anymore there are also lots of theories about this and um, if you see like war coverage 24 7 for example for a prolonged time you're like yeah I'm, ju I'm just used to it now it's not real for me anymore there's also a theory that explains that more on this maybe on in, in, a, in a war video um but so the news cycles were happy that something new happened as i mentioned in the beginning of this video and so this leads to more clicks more views more reads more advertising and hence this economical theory makes sense here because well as long as it makes money if it bleeds it leads and that's unfortunately always true it's still true and that's probably the only principle uh, that any of those media outlets go by and see my problem is well do i fault like things like huffington post for that not as much as i fault the new york times or cnn or something for it because they want to be real news outlets right they're clearly not anymore because they're clearly also only in it for the money which again makes sense because so many people work for them um so it's it's a vicious circle but if you're saying you're an unbiased news source you should act like that and not jump on the bandwagon and just beat the drum the horse beat the horse and i want to say but i mean everyone's dead so just don't do it. Ethics are apparently only something we teach at university and no one else takes it serious anymore. So that's my, my take on like the coverage of the Titan uh, sub-disaster. Let me know what you think. Do you think I'm exaggerating? Do you think, hey man, that's, we want to see all the content um, all the time? Because uh, like I said, I, I, I can't see it anymore. I think it's really too much. Like let them rest in peace. Give the family some peace um and just just stop it with all this i know tragedy indulging content creation because it's not news reporting anymore it's just pure content creation for lead's sake that's it let me know what you think you're agreeing you disagree if you disagree i delete your comment i'm kidding <laughs> if you agree do you disagree let me know um yeah like share subscribe for more media bashing coming soon or maybe just follow also my podcast audio only podcast now i'm on mindful media and communications if you if you want to listen to that that would be cool until then stay safe take care tell stephen a smith what you think about him <laughs> until then sorry cup